Hey Bon Beanie everybody, welcome to episode 5 of the Cruise Geeks Fantastic Guide to Snorkeling. In this episode we're going to cover, wait for it, accessories for snorkeling. <laughs> accessories for snorkeling. There are so many. I've got a few on the table here. These are things that I tend to use. Some of them I don't even really use that often, but I want to go over these and let you know what's out there. So I'm going to start with one that I just got recently. I haven't even really used this particular version yet, but a wetsuit. Now, this is a super thin wetsuit. Why do you need a wetsuit? One, if you get cold easy. Two, if you're snorkeling in a cold area, Three, if you're afraid of getting stung by things. Now this is not normally an issue in the Caribbean, but there are areas in the world like Australia where you definitely want to have some skin protection because of things like irukandji jellies and that sort of stuff. So uh, a wetsuit, a thin wetsuit for warm, a thicker wetsuit for cold can be a lifesaver. Sometimes literally, depending on where you're at. But in the Caribbean, not really an issue. Now I, I do usually wear is some sort of protection, a rash guard, something that just covers my body. One, I don't want to use sunscreen any more than I have to because it is damaging to a lot of the wildlife, especially the coral. So if you're scuba diving, if you're swimming, if you're snorkeling around a coral reef, try and find a coral safe sunscreen or at least minimize the amount that you use. One way to do that is just by covering yourself up. The other thing is a lot of times I'm on a cruise, I don't want to get sunburned and then ruin a couple days of my cruise because I feel miserable. So protect your skin, protect your skin. That's super important. So this is, this is something you might want to consider, but probably you're just going to be okay with like a rash guard, something like that. All right, the next thing I want to go over is something that you want to have if you're wearing a wetsuit, maybe even if you're not, but if you're planning on swimming underwater, something that's going to make your life a lot easier are going to be weights. Now, I'll be honest with you, I don't use these that often, but I normally wish I had them. Salt water makes you more buoyant, which means you float more than fresh water, and most people are naturally positively buoyant. That means, it doesn't mean that they're like, the buoyancy is half full, it means that you float. You f literally float, especially after a lot of cruise meals, if you catch my drift, you float. But anyway, uh, here's the thing. Weights can help you out. Now you have to be careful with weights because you got to know what you're doing. If you weigh yourself down and then you wear yourself out, that can be a dangerous thing. So this is not for the beginner, the amateur snorkeler. This is for somebody who's more experienced and mostly for free divers. If you're just swimming down every now and then 10, 15 feet, don't worry about the weights. But if you're going to be doing some serious free diving, you want some weights. And there's different options out there. You can get hard weights like these, which are going to go on a weight belt, maybe like this one here. This is a, a weight belt that, now this is super important. This is called a quick release, a safety release. So you click this, it comes off really easily. That way if you need to drop your weights and get to the surface, you can. That's a super important feature. That's why you don't just put them on your belt from, you know, Target or something like that. Um, for me, I just recently bought this weight belt. This is a rubber weight belt. It's stretchy, so that means it works really well. Uh, with a wetsuit, it works really well when you're swimming underwater because here's the thing, uh, as you go underwater, you get thinner. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, all those different weight loss techniques that claim to work, most of them are garbage, but swimming underwater does make you lose weight. Well, it just doesn't really make you lose weight. It just compresses your body together. The bad news is when you come to the surface, it just expands again. But while you're underwater, you look good. And so this belt will help you to keep from having to keep tightening your belt over and over again. You can tighten it. It'll just stay on a little bit better. It's really good for uh, free diving. And it's heavy. So this is why I don't normally take it with me because these are pretty heavy. When I scuba dive, I might wear anywhere from 12 to 20 pounds, depending on wetsuits and things like that. I don't necessarily want to be hauling that back and forth in a suitcase. So uh, if you do go diving somewhere, they will normally, they'll have weights available for you. You don't have to bring them with you. If you are free diving on your own or scuba diving on your own, that's when you may want to consider bringing some weights along for the ride. Now let's see what else we've got here. Now the next thing that you want to consider maybe is getting some liquid 
spit. Yes, I'm serious. Liquid spit. This is a this is a gel or liquid that you put, this is just a different brand, that you put into your mask and you rub it around and then you dip it in the water and it keeps your mask from fogging up. Now there are alternatives to these, okay? One alternative to these is literally spit. And I'll be honest, it's the one I usually use. Some people are grossed out by that. I say, on you. Spit is cheap. In fact, it's free. It works really well. Uh, sometimes if you've been eating right before, it gets a little, no, I'm not going to get in there. But look, spit in the mask. It works the same as this. The gel will work a little better. The reason I bought this is when I was having difficulty with my frameless masks staying defogged. I thought, you know, maybe this would help. It did a little bit, but now that I got the that coating off I talked about in the mask episode, I don't need it. Here's another option that you have. One, most dive boats, if you're going snorkeling on a dive boat, they'll usually have a defog spray they'll bring around that usually works just fine. Another option and what they normally use is literally baby shampoo. It's cheaper than this spit, not cheaper than this spit, but it's cheaper than that spit. And uh, you just put a little baby shampoo. You want to use baby shampoo, why? Because it doesn't sting the eyes. You do want to try and rinse it all out, but if you don't, it's going to be a lot better if it's baby shampoo. What it does is basically makes a little film, a little coating, so that the, the vapor from the fog can't adhere to the inside of your mask. This is how defogs work. That's why saliva works. That's why baby shampoo works. That's why liquid spit works. So that's something you might want to consider. Another thing you might want is a bag to put all this stuff in. You got a lot of stuff you're hauling back and forth. I like the mesh bags because the water drains right out of it. I'll try and dip these in fresh, the whole bag. Sometimes I'll dip in fresh water if I have that option. One, you want to rinse off your gear in fresh water if you've been in salt water, but also um, you want to rinse off your bag if it has zippers. This one is nice because it has an opening on the top, but then, let's see if I can find it here. It's got an opening up at the top that's like, got a little cord to tighten it, but then it's also got this zipper here so I can access things this way as well. So this is a great bag, wasn't super expensive. There's all kinds of bags you can get. Just get a bag. This one also is a nice comfortable backpack. So if I have to walk for a little bit, works really well. It's got an extra pocket on here um, somewhere. Here it is. It's got an extra pocket. I could throw my mask in there or I can throw things that I want to keep dry like maybe car keys if I'm local or something like that. Um, yeah, so a dive bag is a good option. All right, let me clear some of this stuff off here so we can get to the next stuff. All right, I cleared some stuff out of the way. I realized I forgot to talk about this other dive belt here. You may have seen these weights. These are soft weights. This is just a different system. You put them into this, these pouches here, and then you zip it up. So uh, it still has the quick release buckle on there. It's a little more comfortable. Uh, I don't like to use it unless I'm diving locally but just didn't want, to, didn't want to leave it out. You guys are like, wait, wait, wait. You didn't talk about the weight. So uh, don't, play, don't play cornhole with these because you'll kill somebody. But yeah, weights. All right, let's get to the other stuff here. Let me just clean this off. There are some other accessories you might want. One thing you might want to invest in is a dry box. Now this is a Pelican box, but um, these are great. They come in different shapes and sizes. They are dry, so maybe you got something you don't want to get it wet. Maybe some cash, maybe a camera, maybe the phone won't fit in this one unless you got like a really old razor phone or something but um but yeah a dry box is something you might want to consider we also have a dry bag a whole backpack that stays dry that comes in really handy for going on a boat going to the beach keep some of the sand out you're never going to keep all the sand out okay let me just break that news to you right you're never ever going to keep all the sand out but you can keep the water out so that'll that'll save your tech it'll save your your stuff that's going to be susceptible to that and then the other thing you might want to consider getting is a camera. Capture the moment. Now there are there are point and click cameras. Here's a couple of my older ones. This is an Olympus Tough camera. They're still on the market. There's some newer models. This is a fairly new model, a Nikon camera. These are great point and shoot. They do video, um, different quality. They're okay. I mean, you're gonna spend around 300 bucks for one of these. They sometimes come with the little floaty thing. Sometimes they don't. Get the floaty thing. All right. <laughs> get the floaty thing and most for most people 
uh, because I have more than one time, I have found a floating camera floating down the waterway and picked it up for somebody and said, uh, does this yours? But also these are water resistant or waterproof, I should say, to different amounts. So this, this one, for example, is 33 feet. That's great for most people for snorkeling. You don't need deeper than 33 feet. This one, I believe, is similar. This one is, let's see, 100 feet. So this one's going to go a little deeper to 100 feet. That's going to do most scuba divers. You're not going to go deeper than 100 feet. But hey, if you are, then you might want to consider something like a GoPro. What I like to use instead of a GoPro is this this is my Sony FDRX 3000. If you see any underwater video on the Cruise Geeks channel from me, this is what it was shot with most likely if it's before this video. So this is this is a great camera, similar to the GoPro. It came with the waterproof case. I prefer this to the GoPro. I don't want to get too much into camera reviews, but uh, this has a thing in it, a uh, an algorithm, I guess you would say, that adjusts to the color blue. So when you go underwater, the deeper you go, the less red you see, and it starts you start to lose other colors the deeper you go. Um, you can get filters for GoPros and other cameras that sort of do this. You can do a little bit of fixing in post, but this camera does an amazingly good job of keeping those colors natural when you're just filming with it. Now, I don't like to just hold it like this. Some people use a little handle that they use. I've used those before. They work all right. Um, but here's what I use, and I strongly recommend this. This is, you can get these in different sizes, but this is a super simple one. This just goes on here like this, and I'll tell you why I like it. I don't use a floaty. I know you're like, Matt, you just said always get a floaty, and now you're saying you don't use a floaty. I don't use a floaty, but I have this thing wrapped around my wrist. I am not gonna forget. I'm not gonna not realize that this thing falls loose okay it's there it's heavy but I hold on to it and the reason I like it is because it helps me keep a stable steady shot it is so important when you're filming underwater to get that stable shot and it's hard to do okay it's hard for me to do so this is going to help a great deal with that so I picked this up on Amazon for I don't know I think it was under might have been under 10 bucks, under 20 but it wasn't that expensive. You can get really expensive ones. You don't need to. It's a pretty basic device. I've seen people make them out of PVC. Whatever. It works. So, something to consider. If you guys, by the way, if you guys are interested in a, uh, a, a few episodes, maybe a whole other series on underwater photography, underwater videography, uh, I am not a professional, but I have gotten some experience over the years, and I have learned some from my mistakes and I can share those with you. So if you're interested in that, comment below. Let me know you wanna see that down the road. We'll, we'll consider working on that. Um, but yeah, these are some of the accessories that you might wanna consider. Um, some other things that you might wanna consider is a snorkeling vest. These are something that will be provided or forced upon you through, through most companies if you do a snorkeling excursion through them. It is usually a horseshoe kind of, or a, um, collar thing that you wear, like a horse collar thing you wear, and it has a little uh, attachment that you can manually inflate. Some of them have CO2 cartridge you pull and it'll inflate, but most of them don't have that anymore. They usually have a whistle on them for safety, but they're, they're great if you want to stay at the surface. They're terribly uncomfortable. They have a strap that goes between your legs, really uncomfortable, but, uh, but mo most places will make you wear one of these. I have considered buying my own because they do make some comfortable neoprene ones for about 70, 80 bucks. Uh, I don't know if the companies would let me wear that instead of theirs. Um, so I haven't bit the bullet and bought that yet, but it's something that I've been eyeing up. So snorkeling vest may be something you want to buy. If you want to get the kind they sell, if it's something that you actually want to wear, they're, you can get them pretty cheap, like 15, 20 bucks. I think you can find them on Amazon. Maybe, maybe a little more. I haven't checked recently, but they're not super expensive. The one I want is like 75 bucks or 80 bucks. I don't know. Of course, it's more expensive. Now, another thing that you can get for snorkeling, but really I should say for free diving, is an actual computer. So I know when you think of a computer, maybe this isn't what you think of, but dive computers are a thing, and this is actually a free diving computer. Now, honestly, you don't need this for snorkeling, but if you are free diving, that means swimming deep underwater, this can be important. It can actually be a safety piece of equipment. It's gonna track all of my dives. So every time I swim underwater, it's gonna track how deep I go, how long I'm underwater. It's gonna tell me, show my, how fast I go down, how fast I come up, 
All that information is stored in here. It's got alarms. It tells me when I'm hitting certain depths. I can set it to where it tells me uh, to come up after a certain amount of time. There's a, there's a lot of options. And the final thing I just want to mention, something you might want to consider for snorkeling gear. This is a safety feature depending on where you're snorkeling. If you're snorkeling on your own, off the beach, off a boat, you need a dive flag. If there's boat traffic in the water, you don't want to get hit by a boat. So you can get inflatable ones. You can get dive flags that stick to something that floats. The inflatable ones are nice because it's like a it's like a beach ball or something. You completely deflate them and you can carry it with, with you. They're super inconvenient and uh, I avoid them as much as I can. But you know, if you are in a situation where there's boat traffic, uh, it's better to be inconvenienced a little bit than to be hit by a, a jet ski or something. So that would be another thing you might want to consider. And another reason why a lot of places when you when you snorkel from shore, you're in a safe swimming zone, so there's no boat traffic allowed, or you're on a boat, they have the dive flag, they're watching out for you. So those are usually, that's the situation you're in, but there are there are exceptions to that rule. Well, that is going to wrap up episode five, the accessories episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope you got some insight. If you think something's missing from this, comment below, let me know what it is so we can talk about it. If you have questions about any of the stuff I talked about or have things that you'd like to see me cover in future episodes, please let me know in the comments below. Also, make sure to hit that thumbs up so that we know that you are enjoying these videos and subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you know when new episodes are coming out, yada, yada, yada. You know how it goes. It's YouTube. That's how it works. Thank you for watching. Until the next episode, have a fantastic day. <laughs>